Hello, my name is Astrid and welcome to my inquiry about water scarcity in the Murray-Darling Basin and what this means for agricultural production in Australia. We live on the driest continent on Earth, apart from Antarctica, and we have a large range of competing needs for our finite water resources. You can see some of these here. Water to sustain our natural environment and ecosystems, water for industry such as farming and mining, and water for our own private consumption. The challenge is to balance our water needs in a sustainable way. In the last 15 years, Australia experienced one of the worst droughts on record, the Millennium Drought. We're used to droughts, but this one was sustained and severe. Since that drought, there's been general agreement that more water must be reserved for our natural environment. So other user groups have to use less water. This includes irrigators in the farming industry. So why should we care? The Murray-Darling Basin is the most irrigated area of land in Australia and produces 40% of our crops and agricultural produce. Spanning five states and covering over 1 million square kilometres, it has great environmental significance, being home to thousands of wetlands and species of birds and animals. Importantly, it also produces one third of our overall food supply. Crops like wheat and barley, cotton, grapes and vegetables, dairy and citrus, and nearly all of Australia's rice crops are produced here. Each crop requires a varying degree of irrigated water to yield a good crop. With the basin receiving only just over 6% of all natural water runoff, and with the impact of climate change, water scarcity is real, and we should care how our farmers are managing the challenge of growing our much needed crops while ensuring they make productive use of less available water. So what happened to crop production during the drought? Here's what I've learned. The volume of irrigated land in the basin fell, yet this impacted agricultural industries differently. While 70% less water was used, the production of some crops fell a lot, like rice and cotton and citrus, yet other crops did fairly well, such as grapes. And during all this, the gross value of irrigated production only fell by 14%. How was this possible? Irrigators learned to adapt to less water and become more productive. How did they do this? Water trading helped. What this means is that irrigators can trade or buy allocated water entitlements between themselves so that water can be used most efficiently in the sector. Water can be diverted from lower value crops such as rice to higher value crops such as grapes and vegetables. Water use efficiencies are also able to be drawn on or better ways of irrigating or using water. The goal is to use less water, produce the same amount of crop. A key water use efficiency is spray irrigation rather than flood irrigation. Deepening dams to reduce evaporation of water may also help farmers generate the same level of agricultural output, but using less water. This means that potentially food production levels can remain constant despite the challenges of water scarcity. Farmers may further adapt by changing the types of crops they plant or even move the production of crops further south where there's more rain. This contrasts to some researchers' views that suggest that water scarcity will have major implications for production, despite alternative irrigation methods being available. In 2011, the government introduced significant water reform to the basin to address the overuse of water by the irrigation sector. The Murray-Darling Basin Plan mandates that more water must be returned to the environment, so there's less water available for farming. It was met with outrage from communities. Communities are concerned that the plan will mean a loss in jobs. These concerns are real. The drought directly contributed to 3% reduction in employment levels, or around 6,000 jobs in the Murray River region. Less water for irrigators could mean less agricultural activity and value-adding services, and people rely hugely on jobs in this sector in the communities here. It's clear that water reforms must be rolled out with community consultation, as people's livelihoods are at stake. This inquiry has shown me that reduced water doesn't necessarily mean we'll see fewer crops, although some argue that this may still be the case. Generally, we agree that there are more water-saving ways of producing them. So what can we do about this? I'd encourage you to consider the interconnectedness of the natural environment and our economic and social welfare. It's not a case of the environment's needs trumping those of community or vice versa. Consider how you use water in a water scarce environment. Think about our farmers and where your food comes from by Australian and be aware as you eat how much water has been used to provide you with food. Thanks for listening.